Alexander Pierce, the Escaped Cannibal Convict Alexander Pierce was an Irish prisoner who broke out with a number of his fellow inmates. For nine weeks they journeyed through the wilderness of Tasmania, and during this time Pierce ate all his companions. Alexander Pierce was born in 1790 in County Fermanagh, Ireland. He arrived in Tasmania, Australia in 1821. There he became a farmer and a petty thief who was in and out of prison. He was actually punished with a beating or whipping and forced to work in chains for his petty crimes. He was caught stealing the ducks and turkeys of his neighbors and a large wheelbarrow. Pierce was also heavily punished for being extremely drunk and inappropriate on several occasions. However, Pierce would always find a way to escape, even if his sentences were only short. The number of times he escaped prison can be equal to the number of times he was charged with different crimes. The authorities, apparently sick of his frequent prison breaks, sent Pierce to Macquarie Harbor, a prison on Sarah Island with thick and unexplored jungle surrounding it. The Escape the Macquarie Harbor, as described by guards and the prisoners themselves, was a totally isolated place with unpredictable weather. The prison was surrounded by forests of huge trees, and the prisoners' main duties were to cut and transport good quality timber. The forests were composed of large myrtle, beeches, and tough pines which are used for making boats. The prisoners, apparently tired of the hard and repetitive work, seven of them, including Alexander Pierce, Thomas Bodum, Edward Brown, Alexander Dalton, Robert Greenhill, John Mather, and Matthew Travers, devised a plan to escape. On September 20, 1822, they succeeded in fleeing the prison. The group originally planned to travel by sea. But it didn't work very well, so they impulsively took the track into the mountains and forests. The next inhabited place was 225 kilometers away, and the escapees who braved the vast area were extremely under-equipped. Greenhill chose himself as the spearhead of the team, since he possessed an axe that he had discreetly obtained while they were in prison. Through the hard terrain and forests, the men were already famished after eight days of continuous traveling. They realized that if they didn't eat soon, they would all die, and they agreed that their best bet was to eat each other. Due to an unknown reason, the group first killed Alexander Dalton by using their one and only axe. This deed made Brown and Kennerly fear for their lives. So they fled and went back to the prison. Though the two made it back, they shortly died because of over-fatigue. For forty-two days, the five remaining men coursed the wilderness of Tasmania, led by Greenhill, who had a good knowledge of navigation. Since they needed to eat to be able to go on, the next weaker man got killed. Human flesh, unlike normal food, never satisfies hunger since it is only rich in protein and not carbohydrates, the nutrient that provides energy. The team's cannibalism continued and the killing did not cease until only three men were left, Greenhill, Pierce, and Travers. The men first cooked the severed body parts, intestines, and other internal organs of their companions. However, as time went by, they found the food preparation tedious, so they decided to eat them raw. At this point, Pierce thought that he was next, since the other two men, Greenhill and Travers, seemed to have formed an alliance. However, Pierce got fortunate when Travers was bitten by a venomous snake. For days, Greenhill and Pierce dragged and carried their dying companion, on the fifth day, Travers finally begged them to kill him, and both men killed him in his sleep with the axe. They brought Travers' flesh with them to aid them in the remaining days of travel. With only two men left, 
Greenhill and Pierce, had a sleeping challenge. Both were sure that the one who slept would be the one who could certainly be killed. After eight days, Greenhill finally fell asleep, and Pierce did not lose the chance to grab the axe and chop off his companion's head. For several weeks, Pierce continued to travel through the terrain, and he eventually reached an aborigine settlement. There, he stole food to sustain himself. As he saw sheep, he knew that he had finally reached the inhabited districts. Luck was on his side when he came upon a shepherd whom he knew. He lived in the area for a number of months where he commenced robbing livestock from farms. He was eventually spotted and was recaptured after 113 days of being free. Upon his return to the prison, he confessed about the cannibalism of his group. He retold every detail of their journey and claimed that he was the sole survivor. Some of the authorities did not believe the story, especially Robert Knopwood, who firmly assumed that the other prisoners with Pierce were still either in the wild or went to stay in other district settlements. Pierce was nevertheless returned to Macquarie Harbor. He stayed in prison for several months when he and a friend named Thomas Cox decided to escape prison again. According to Pierce himself, it was him who pestered Cox to come with him, which he later regretted. After ten days... Pierce surrendered near the King River, which is now called the River of Strahan. However, his young companion, Thomas Cox, was nowhere to be seen. Upon inspection, the police found some body parts of Cox in Pierce's pockets. The odd thing was, he still had an ample amount of food with him. The act of cannibalism was apparently not necessary for survival. During his trial on June 20th, 1824... Pierce admitted that Cox drove him to the end of his wits, because the latter was a hindrance. In the course of the escape, Pierce noted that Cox slowed him down because of his inability to swim. The witnesses, after Pierce surrendered, stated that he was indeed remorseful of his actions, and that he surrendered because of guilt. However, when he was asked why he murdered again, he eerily said that human flesh tastes better than anything else, and it was far better than any meat, may it be fish or pork. Pierce was found guilty of murdering Cox and was given a death sentence. On July 19, 1824, Alexander Pierce was hanged by the neck until dead in the town jail of Hobart, after the last rites were given by a priest.